all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. I got this Bible verse tattooed over my scars because what the Bible verse is basically saying is, no one's perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. first time I saw cutting was in the seventh grade. I saw it on one of my friend's arms. And uh, I asked them, what is that? And they told me it was, a, it was a way to control the pain. It was a way to escape. Uh, you're going to get hurt anyway. You might as well be you. Um, so, that's where I started. That was the first thing I saw. I was going through pain anyway, so I made it my own. Uh, the first time I ever cut, um, it's a very scary thought process. Um, what knife, uh, where at, what happens, uh, how big is the cut gonna be? The first time I ever did it, it was with a butter knife. I was really scared, and, and uh, it was just a scratch. But it was the first, and it slowly, as as I cut more and more, it got deeper and deeper. Um, but cutting was my out. It was my way to escape. It, um, they weren't hurting me. I was hurting me, uh, and. It made it okay. Well, I went to three different high schools. In the first high school, um, I, I got beat up a lot still. Um, at one point, I even got stabbed because of the color of my skin. And my second high school, I was just as as a uh, as. Hidden. Uh, no one talked to me. I didn't get. I was in the back row. I tried to talk to people. No one would talk to me. Uh, I ate alone every lunch for the whole year. And then I moved to my third school. And actually, that one was better. I still cut, but not as much. I even stopped for a period of time. In college, I, one of my friends saw me cut. Or saw my cuts. Not he didn't watch me saw my cut and uh, he walked in my room and took every sharp object in my room and he made me email a teacher I trusted and so I emailed the teacher and I went and talked to him and he suggested I start guidance counseling and so I started guidance counseling and uh, they, uh, they suggested that I start on antidepressants. And so one night I decided, I'm done. I'm going to end it all, which is the night that I wrote my suicide. Once I got caught, I guess I tried to get even more sneaky about it. Because um, I kept cutting. Uh, my friend that helped me out the, with the taking all the knives out showed me this thing on the internet. Um, it's called the Butterfly Project which is where whenever you feel like you're going to cut, draw a butterfly on your arm or wherever you want to cut and name it after someone you love. And you let it stay there until it fades. And if you feel like cutting again, you put another one on until you, you know you can have as many as you need. But if you do cut, you kill, kill the, the butterfly and all the butterflies that you have on there. And uh, I mean, one time I had my whole arm covered in butterflies, just drawing them. Um, and people would ask what that is, and I would just tell them I was doodling or something. But it did help. Um, it, it put a almost it put a face behind what like what could happen if to get almost caught again, or if I did succeed with the suicide attempt. Um, then uh, after college. 
I went to camp. And at camp, I had this major anxiety attack and they had to take me to the hospital. At the hospital, we found out that I had a rare heart disease called WPW. And uh, they did the heart surgery a few days later. Um, it did work. We found out out later, did the, the first heart surgery didn't work and we had to go back later. But whenever the, all the craziness of the first heart surgery was happening, uh, the mindset that I had was, God's trying to kill me. I don't deserve to be alive. I got a, it was actually March. I got a call from my best friend and uh, he was, he, he called me and he, he was very upset and he really needed me to get down there. So I went down and visited my best friend um, and uh, I was hanging out with him. I stayed there about a week, but while I was there, uh, I guess I got down really low one night and I took a lot of medicine. So they took me to the hospital and uh, I was I was seeing stuff and and, and uh, I don't remember much from that. But they they said that it was that I, I said it was, it was a suicide attempt. So the next day they took me to a psych ward and I was I spent the week at the psych ward. And it was really scary. <laughs> I have gotten better. I, uh, I haven't cut in almost a year um, with the support of people. Um, I, every once in a while I still go back to the butterfly project and you know draw a butterfly and it does help. Um, but it's almost like you have to set a mindset that you know I, I, I'm not going to cut anymore and to make that happen, um, to make that happen, you got to get a support team. You gotta talk, be able to talk to people, and have them help you, because um, you can't do it alone. Uh, it's almost impossible to do it alone. I'm, I'm sure there's someone out there. But, um, the the thing I, I read it somewhere, and it really got to me, um, was you're gonna have many last cuts. Don't give up because you gave, you gave in. You can get better. It, it can happen. It might take years, but it can happen. And, and sure, the the thoughts are still there. Do I want to cut? Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said before, cutting is an addiction. And you know, you have to lay off of it. And uh, you know, it, it's sort of like saying someone just quit cutting. Sort of like telling uh, someone that's addicted to drugs, just stop doing it. You know, just stop. And you can't. It's, you can't. But you can try if you, with the right mindset and support. You can, you can do it. It's been a year and hopefully longer.